Hey everyone, welcome to Palmetto Cats Live. You like that? That was pretty sweet, wasn't it? <laughs> well, tonight we have another show where I know zero about <laughs> that. I know zero about you thought I knew a little about a uh, little bit about bank fishing. Well, I know zero about carp fishing. Thankfully, I have four awesome guests who are going to come in here tonight and uh, tell you all you need to know. So if you're not a carp fisherman or you have never carp fished before, or maybe you haven't done it in a long time, if you're looking to get into it, this is the show for you. So if you don't mind, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, share the video out. I know some people have already shared the links. I really appreciate it. I didn't share it to any of the catfish platforms because they're not carp sites. Um, but I think that, you know, if you, if you like fighting, uh, good fighting fish, which I've heard carp are great fighting fish. <clears throat> You're going to want to try carp fishing. So uh, the guests I have in first one is going to hopefully he'll pop in room in a second. I saw him in the chat. So if you don't mind, go ahead and pop in there. Um, we're going to get cranking here in just a minute at the bottom. You'll notice all of my boom squad members. Thank you so much for those of you who have joined the boom squad. Uh, we're going to start doing some live streams here in just a, uh, a few days, maybe, maybe three or four days just for members. So be looking for those notifications in the community section. If you are a member of the boom squad, check that out. Also members of the boom squad, they get a, uh, uh, early access to all my videos, and we're going to have some behind-the-scenes footage coming in soon. So thank you, thank you, thank you to those people. Uh, I see a lot of people popping in. You know, these shows are are a little more popular than the previous ones, so to shout everybody out, we'd be here for 20, 30 minutes. But just right off the bat, Creole, Squirrel, what's up, Upstate? Uh, I got Buckeye, Weekend Angler, Mike Turner, uh, Sean Abney, Setting Hooks and Crossing Eyes, uh, Finn Seeker TV, Fishing with Paula Smith, Mike Greenwell. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I do want to remind you that uh, of two things. Number one, all of the links to my guest's YouTube channels are in the description. Um, so after we're finished, if you're not already, if you haven't already checked them out, if you're not already subscribed, I would appreciate you going and checking them out. Uh, they have great channels, all, all of them. Uh, and help them out. One of them is only a few away from 3000. So before he comes in, um, the, uh, he also wins the award for the longest YouTube name ever. <laughs> but if you haven't checked out carp and catfish baits, tips, tricks, and techniques, go check him out. Sub help him get to that 3000 mark. I believe it is so that when he pops in here, he'll have something to celebrate. Anyway, we're going to get started. All right, I got uh, my first super sticker. Thank you, Steven. I'm just going to put steel. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to get cranking up. My first guest, you've all seen him. You've all probably heard of him. Uh, it's a man by the name of Victor, and he has a channel called iFish. Uh, and I'm going to bring him in right now. He fishes for a lot of different species, but also carp. Hey, Victor. And I'm going to bring him in right now. He fishes for a lot of different species, but also car. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that stream is behind. Okay, there is a good lag in the video. But yeah. Good can somebody that. tell me if you guys. Yeah. Can you guys tell me if you can hear me? Yeah, if you can mute that stream, uh, that's all right. Hey, you know, live TV, we're going to have these difficulties, especially if you've never done you it before. You guys hear me? We do hear you, Victor. Yeah, if, you could, if you could mute that and come over to this camera wanna, uh, where I I'm looking at you from. Tell me you guys can hear me. Okay. Loud and clear. All right, good. I'm muting the screen. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys. So Palmetto told me only 10 minutes, so I'm not going to get too deep into any one particular topic. I'm just going to share some things that I've seen in YouTube videos that kind of bother me a little bit. 
and you'll see why in a second. I'm gonna talk pretty much, uh, this kind of little presentation is pointed towards beginner American anglers. Beginner American anglers. If you're experienced, not for you. If you're not American, if you're European, <laughs> not for you. And if you're from uh, England, God forbid, definitely not for you <laughs> people from england they know already everything it's pointless to talk to them but i'm gonna tell you what i think if you're a beginner carp angler what you need to catch car carp and what you don't need and i'm gonna start from the hook and go to the tackle i'm gonna show you some tackle in a second but i think people are focusing on tackle too much and trust me this is coming from somebody who has a lot of tackle i had i have almost a hundred rods that many reels this fox reel here i saw it on his uh, thumbnail i have that fox reel it costs 260 dollars i have two of them that reel has 18 bearings it's not gonna help you catch one more fish compared to a $40 Daiwa Laguna or Daiwa Excel or, or anything else. But okay, here is what I think you need to catch a lot of carp. If, if you cover these basics, you, you can catch a lot of carp. You can catch as many carp as anybody with expensive tackle. Starting from the hook, just get a normal J hook size four or size six. You know, I don't want to get picky, just don't buy Eagle Claw, anything else, pretty much size 4 or size 6 is, 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 is going to work fine. Just for the love of Jesus, don't use circle <laughs> hooks. Circle hooks don't work for mm. carp. I see people use it and they tell me I caught one carp. I mean, circle hooks don't work for carp. There is a reason if you go to a carp uh, fishing site in UK and you search the hooks you're gonna see hundreds of hooks and not one circle hook they don't work for carp you will still catch some carp they don't work for carp also stay away from treble hooks treble hooks will work for carp but there's just animal cruelty if i see anybody using treble hooks for carp fishing two thumbs down right away i mean i'm honest with you there's there's just animal cruelty you don't need treble hooks to catch carp. Just get a little J hook and you're done. What is next? The feeder. It's important to have a feeder. Without a feeder, it's very inefficient. You can still catch fish without a feeder. If you chum and then you cast exactly where you chum, you can still catch fish. But just buy a feeder from AliExpress or eBay or Amazon. It really doesn't matter. They cost $1, $2, depending on how many you buy at once and how many feeders you're going to lose per year. I mean, you're going to spend no more than $10 a year on feeders. That's how much I spend. And you don't have to buy the expensive feeders from Corda and Fox and whoever else, five and six dollar feeders. You can check my videos. You will never see one expensive feeder in my videos. I have expensive tackle. If I thought these expensive feeders would have any benefit whatsoever, I would buy them, even if there was just a little bit of benefit. But in my opinion, the $6 feeders from Fox and Corda have absolutely zero advantage over the cheap garbage from AliExpress. That's just my opinion. Maybe durability, but people are thinking they're going to catch more fish. What's more important, though, the hook link between the feeder and the hook, it has to be short. No time to explain you why. It, uh, it has to be short. Too long, you're going to catch fewer fish. You're going to gut hook fish. Just it has to be short. Three, four inches, not more than that. Next important thing. So you got to have a J hook, just four or six size. You got to have a feeder. You got to have a short leader. Next important thing is monofilament main line. Guys, it's again, people want to spend money to catch more fish. If you use braid because you, you had braid on your catfishing reel, 
you're going to lose a lot of carb. Okay. You need line with stretch. Okay. Monofilament is already the cheapest line. Why people just don't use monofilament? It's so cheap. Just a uh, Berkeley big game is what I recommend. It's good enough. Any line better, more expensive than Berkeley big game. I don't think it has any benefits whatsoever for spinning reel eight to 10 pounds for bait casting reel you can go all the way to 20 25 pounds because it doesn't impede casting but monofilament is important if you use other line you will lose fish i don't care how you set up your drag i don't care how soft a rod you have if you use braid for car fishing you're gonna lose fish and then we go to rods and reels and I got to tell you, I really have no recommendations over there. Use whatever you want. Everything will work for carp fishing. I promise you that. These uh, expensive British rods, the 12 footers, some of them are 13 footers. This is, this is just so impractical and expensive and in my opinion, counterproductive. The best advice that I can give you is if you are a catfish angler, use your catfish rod and reel, just monofilament, okay? If you are a bass angler, use your bass gear. It will work just fine. Again, just monofilament. And if you're a bass angler using bass tackle, they tend to be very stiff. Just make sure if you're a beginner, you know what the drag is and how to use it. As long as you know how to use drag, bass gear is perfect. To be honest with you, I prefer bass gear over catfish gear when it comes to carp fishing. Even if you have, if you're just an ultra light angler and you just pen fishing and you want to, you know, catch a few carp at a local pond, you can even catch carp with fish gear i have acc crappy stick if, if they are a little bit stiffer okay not the the softest ultra lights but if you've seen in my videos acc crappy sticks it's a crappy rod i use it regularly for carp fishing i mean as long as you know what drag is and how to use it you can use anything you want i promise you you don't need a long rod uh for for or, or expensive reel for fishing for carp. And I'll tell you why. The why is because the last important thing that you need, and it's more important than anything else, is reading a little bit about carp. Where does it live? What does it eat? What kind of behavior does it have? Because carp behavior and habits are very different than any other fish. All of the other fish, you know, you look for the drop off. I don't think you can hear us, guys. For the stumps. Carp hates all of that. You know, catfish, they will bite more when there is current. Bass, the same thing. They'll bite more when there's a little bit of current. You see people wait for the power plants to start discharging water and then they fish on Tennessee River. Carp hates current. If you fish on a river, go look left and right. Wherever on the river is the least amount of current, wherever you see slack water, I promise you that's where the carp is going to be. Carp hates current. What carp loves, if, if you're in a lake, is just a soft, stinky bottom, 6 to 10 feet deep. And ideally, the water will have a little bit of stain. The last tip I'm going to give you. If you go to fish a new lake and you see crystal, crystal clear water, just pack your stuff up and get the <laughs> hell out of it. You are not going to catch carp in crystal clear water. That's, that's just a food for another video. But you're not going to catch carp in crystal, crystal clear water. You need stained water. You need a flat you need a shallow flat, no rocks, no drop-offs, no snacks, no nothing, just a boring shallow flat with no current. This is, uh, this is where, this is the perfect area for carp. This is where they go and dig the worms and all of that stuff. Uh, and that's where you're going to find carp. And that's a lot more important actually than any kind of tackle. 
But this kind of expensive carp gear, it bothers me a little bit because I see people on a budget. Charles Roberts, there's uh, no need for that in this chat. Buy the expensive uh, cord, the Somebody please delete that. And the, the, the linking materials and the feeders and these $300 rods and the bait runner reels. Who needs all of that? You don't need this because carp lives shallow. I have never seen in my life occasion where I need a 12 foot rod. I know in Europe there is some big lakes you need 12 foot rod to reach to reach carp. But here in America, I have never seen that. I'm sure there are some lakes, some exception, but in 99% in of chances, wherever you fish a river or lake, you're going to find carp close to the bank because carp don't live deep. Carp live shallow. You don't need a 12 foot rod. You don't need 10 foot rod. Seven foot rod. These are my two favorite rods. You've seen them in all of my videos. This is a seven foot ugly stick tiger elite. Seven mm. foot, one piece. It's a heavy power. We like those ugly it's sticks. Soft blank. It's more like medium heavy. Ugly stick. It's my favorite rod. The other rod is this one is 60 bucks. The second favorite is Shimano Terramar. Again, seven foot. One piece, heavy power, a little bit stronger blank, but not stiffer, just stronger. Again, it has more guides, huge guides, seven foot. This is all you need. And both of these have very cheap reels on them. These are old generation. This is Daiwa Exceller, the older generation. This is a $50 reel. You don't need more than that. Trust me, if I thought <laughs> all of my expensive tackle is sitting packed up in the <laughs> attic above my head. I, I never use it because it's, it, it just gets on the way. Okay, I'm way above time, but I'm gonna see if somebody has any questions. Uh, yeah, I'll put that, that, let me see if I can find that one up I'll here. If somebody has any questions, otherwise feel free to, to switch to switch to, to the next I guest. I think it's way I'm too gonna far, turn here on we sound go. A little bit. I'm going to let him answer this question. I, I don't think you need fluorocarbon for anything in carp fishing at all. Just never fluorocarbon litter for nothing. I, I, I I use braid for all of my leaders and uh, monofilament for mainline. They, they sell very expensive uh, crap, but <laughs> 50 or 60 pound braid, just no high visibility colors. The green color, the dark green color, whatever brand you like, it doesn't matter. Uh, low visibility colors is important for car fishing. All right, I'm going to okay, let him man. see this Feel next one. Switch me. And uh, thank you, Victor, for coming on. Uh, I'm going to take him off the screen. So a lot of information, a lot of information there. Um, and a lot of you in chat were saying what I was thinking, you know. Uh, you know, don't get lost in translation and, and think about how he was saying things. Think about what he was saying. He's being honest with you. Um, me, being a cat fisherman, I just looked up on – Amazon and the internet carp gear and that's what I posted links and actually Michael Murillo sent me most of these links So you don't have to have exactly what is in the description uh, like he said a lot of the stuff he either thinks is no good or um, is only you know for those Elite I guess or people who have a lot of money to spend, but we're not going to get bogged down in that I have another fantastic guest, you know him uh, Mr. Jake from Top Tactic Fishing. How you doing, Jake? Hey, Kevin. Good. How are you, my man? <laughs> good, man. <laughs> Have we had you on the show before? I don't think so. I oh think no, so. some some guy that looked like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was actually. I'm actually at his house right now. Yeah. Um. So I'm actually doing more cat fishing than carp fishing. Actually, here. So. Yeah, um, I saw yeah. the um pictures on Instagram today. 
I know. Yeah, we did, we had a pretty good outing yesterday. We caught around, I think it was like 12 catfish all together. So, oh, wow. Yeah, we did pretty good. But actually, I actually did some carp fishing today, too. I caught around seven carp. Um, so Victor did a pretty good job. Uh, yeah. telling you what you really need to do to catch carp. But I'm going to kind of show you the things that I've that's worked for me since I've been carp fishing. Um, I really got into carp fishing a few years ago, and that was mainly from watching Catfish and Carp, Luke Nichols. And uh, so I've kind of took things from him that I've kind of learned, and I've kind of also developed my own way of carp fishing. So I do have a few things I brought with me, but um, okay. <clears throat> I guess I guess we'll kind of start with some of the basic stuff. So with anybody can catch carp. You really don't need a whole lot of stuff to really catch carp. Really, the easiest way is you just put what Victor said, a number size six, <coughs> number size four, and then you can either put bread on there or you just put corn on the hook and then you just cast it out and then you just kind of wait. You know, it's like the same thing with catfish and you just kind of, you're going to feed, you're going to feed off the bottom essentially. And, um, but what I typically do is a European style of fishing. Um, and what that involves is that involves a method feeder. Um, I think Victor kind of talked about these feeder rigs a little bit, but, um, so this is a method feeder. This kind of acts like a bank sinker. Um, what's nice about it is that it, there's, it can be used in a variety of ways. Um, can you one, do me a favor? Yeah, go can ahead. Can you turn your phone sideways? Sure. Is that better this way? Uh, yeah. I don't know if I can, uh, do it. it's not going to rotate. That's fine. Keep on going. Yeah. Keep on going. Sorry. Yeah, I know. It's I, all right. I know I got the black, the black board. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. But, go for it. Um, anyways, um, so the method feeder, so this is what I typically use when I carp fish. Um, so what this acts is it, it acts as your weight. So it's, it's going to, it could act like a bank seeker. So it'll keep your bait on the bottom. Um, and then this has like two ends on it. So it kind of has a, the top end has a hole and the bottom end has a hole and your line's going to feed through this kind of like an inline sinker. Um, and then what I typically do is I, I have a hair rig. I'm not sure if Victor kind of talked about these or not, but, um, a hair rig mm -hmm. is, a it's a, it's a type of rig specifically mainly used for carp. Um, and what it is, is that you kind of have a swivel on the top end of it. And then you, and then on the other end of the swivel is your, is your line kind of like your leader line, I guess. This is a braided line here. Um, and then goes all the way down to your hook. Okay, okay, this is a number five, six hook. And then what's nice about the hair rig is that um, it has a piece of braid, like a hair, um, off, the, off the side of the hook. And that's what you're going to feed your bait eventually through here. Um, now, this is more of a European style of fishing, but you're going to find that if you start using these rigs more, your, your hookup ratio with carp is going to dramatically increase compared to just using a regular hook with like corn on there. Um, and I've caught lots of catfish on these too. catfish up to like 15 pounds, 20 pounds, mm. just on this kind of uh, rig here. But anyways, going back to the method feeder. Um, so you have your method feeder and then you're going to put your hair rig on the other end of this method feeder here. And it's going to stick up right in there. Okay. Kind of like that. It's going to be nice and snug. And then you're going to have your, your bait onto this hair here. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much all you really need. And then of course your main line is going to come down to the top end of that. So it'll, it'll feed, it'll kind of feed through just like that. But the other purpose of this method feeder is that you're going to have a lot of people kind of have different recipes or ingredients they use to make a pack bait um and a pack bait is like um it's 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 like chum but it's like it'll be a, it's going to be a ball of ingredients all mixed in that you're going to mold around onto this uh, method feeder and um there's a lot of videos out on youtube that people have some people like using panko oats grits uh mixed with corn and um, jello packets. So people kind of have their own way of doing it. But um, Luke Nichols probably has the most easiest way of how to make pack bait, which is panko, a, a can of 
corn and then like a strawberry jello packet you mix it all in there and it's going to be a nice nice kind of like it's almost like a light paste almost but anyways you're going to put that stuff on this method feeder and then you're eventually going to make it into a ball once you get into a ball you put your hook right in there and then you just kind of launch it out there and essentially what's going to happen is that that pack bait's going to kind of fall off make a little chum around your uh, hook here essentially and like i said you're going to have some either corn on here or some people like using boilies which i'm sure some people have heard of but anyways those carp are going to be coming rushing in there chewing up all that pack bait and they'll eventually mm -hmm. find the they'll find the prize in the cereal box which is <laughs> boily or that corn that's there so either way you're going to have something that's going to kind of stick out in that uh, pack bait pile on the bottom of the whatever you're fishing on so mm -hmm. but anyways i do have a couple pre-made rigs i guess you could say um so yeah the um the just how that hair rig works they're picking up the they, they suck up stuff so they have that little mouth that comes out right yeah they're kind of like little vacuums almost i mean the carp mm -hmm. they're just kind of like clamping just chewing everything down and then they'll eventually see um let me see if i if i have one here i have my rig wallet here so i'm just trying to undo these real quick but mm. anyways here's a here's a good one here i guess this is like a this is like a boily here but you can kind of see the uh i'm not sure if you can see the hook or not but yeah here's the hook and you can kind of see the boily kind of you know i rigged it on to this uh hair here but essentially that's you're gonna this, once it's casted it's gonna kind of be in that pile of the pack bait and it's going to kind of sit up there or kind of stick out to these carp um, and they'll eventually take it as long as they're feeding on your pack bait most more most of the time they'll usually pick up your um, your boily or your corn um, mm -hmm. and what's nice about air rigs compared to just using regular hooks is that you can use a variety of things on there you can use real corn you can use fake corn you can use boilies tiger nuts there's like there's like a dozen different like hook baits i guess you can use with a hair rig um so that's kind of my spin on it i mean it, carp fishing can get very very complicated <laughs> um if you go like to the uk or like france and spain some people have like many different kinds of like rigs but i try to keep it simple not too simple but i, I mean i do like the hair rigs but um but this is mainly what i use like 95 percent of the time when i when i catch carp so um like today like i was and what's nice about these rigs is that you will spend a little bit of money but once you get like just like two or three of these these can last you for like most of the year um, and what's good about these specific rigs is that you can fish new areas and catch like 20 pound plus carp for the first time. And you're like, wow, these are awesome. Rigs are yeah. Good. So, like today, uh, Danny, Danny asked what country you mainly fish for carp in. I think I know the answer, but. Oh yeah. USA all the way. Right? <laughs> but anyway, so and by the way, but thank you for your service. I know that you're in the armed forces. No, I appreciate that. Actually, when I was in, because I was deployed to New York City and Central Park was nearby. So I did a lot of carp fishing on my downtime when I was there. I haven't been in Central Park, but I was catching like, like I caught over 100 pounds of carp for in like five hours on my day off. And it was just on stuff like this. And where you can get these at is bigcarptackle.com. Just how I said it, B-I-G, like bigcarptackle.com. You'll see all the different stuff. But um well, the brand that i typically use is um and what's nice about these is that like uh for that website rather is that they already have pre-tied rigs you can buy for like two dollars like oh, one really? dollars yeah so you don't even have to make see that's rig. that's something that i i'm very interested in yeah, um that's say that's, th really, that's what i'm trying to say is that like say that name one more time big carp tackle.com most people typically make their rigs, but what's good about these is that you can just buy. I mean, I make my own now, but in the very beginning, I just bought like pre, pre-made hair rigs, and I felt like I was an expert carp fisherman. Even <laughs> everything was like pre-made, but it, it it works, you know. And then once you start 
kind of get into the flow of things, you can kind of start doing your own spin on it. Like, oh, I'd I'd rather maybe make the hair length maybe a little bit shorter. Yeah. Based (laughs) on what, you know. I want to put something up on the screen here. This, uh, Brandon, welcome to the show, Brandon. Um, Those carp guys overseas are crazy like us cat fishermen with gear. They absolutely are. And I was watching, was it uh, Alex or something? Alex and somebody. The only thing I don't. I mean, I'm. A, they do a great job over on the other side of the pond and stuff like that. And but what's different with the USA is that we have a lot of wild carp, um, river mm. carp, and they fight a lot more aggressively, and they're in a lot more heavy current, or they're just in around a lot of structure. And um, we're like, in like the UK, it's like more like private fisheries, ponds, lakes. The water is not as rough, I guess, but. Um, that's why I like these method feeders because they can really withstand a lot of different cer- different structures and they can kind of withstand current a little bit more. Um, so that, that's why I like kind of keeping to the, the simple stuff. I mean, like I said, mm-hmm. it can get very, very sophisticated and complicated, but. Yeah. And that's what I was, you know, and I, the reason for some reason you're cracking up really bad. No, I'm sorry. When I, when I talk. Is this better? Maybe. Maybe I just need to be quiet. <laughs> I, I, I just, I kind of want to make this like an open discussion too. If anybody had any questions about anything, but yeah, I hope this kind of makes sense. But um, I mean, this is this is what I've used from the very beginning. I really haven't changed a whole lot. I've just kind of tweaked things here and there. But this is when I first started carp fishing. This is what I've done. I've caught in multiple thirty pound plus carp. Um, on stuff like this and just like today for example i fished a new area in tennessee and i caught like seven carp and the biggest was like pushing 20 pounds just on stuff like this you know so it's not like i had to i don't have anything really magical or anything like that it's it's all yeah it's all pretty easy stuff really i mean it's it looks complicated but once you kind of buy the stuff, you can kind of piece it together. You're like, oh yeah, this is not this is not that bad, you know. And yeah, um, so I do have a few videos on different hook baits you can use on your hair rig. And so for those that follow my channel, or you know, I recommend that you check some of that stuff out because I, you know, I try to I try to educate as much as I can with my <clears throat> with my videos. But the um, does anybody I, have any questions? I'm looking. Um... You know, not really. I have some questions. (laughs) So, uh, but I do like the, the comment that Brandon, I think made, um, you know, I think the, from hearing you and from hearing Victor talk about it, is everybody else hearing that clicking sound? I can hear it on my end, but I don't know if it's Uh, me or not, but I mean, I wasn't hearing it before, so very well, it could be me. All right. Um, yeah, it's just when I talk, (laughs) Anyway, I was if it's not bothering anybody, I'm going to keep keep on going. Um, so, like Victor said, I think it's hard as hard as you make it, right? It gets as sophisticated as you make it, just like catfishing and all the the um, rattles and the floats and the the you know the leader lines and the all that other stuff is is as, just as hard as you make it, and you don't need all the expensive or the uh, spe- specific carp to uh, gear is what yeah, I'm trying to say. You don't need to buy the, the $200 carp rod or the $100 carp reel. Um, I mean, just like Victor said, you can just buy, you can, just, you can use like six to seven foot, six to eight foot rod would be good for carp typically. And you can use, like he said, you can use your catfish rods. You can even use your catfish reels. I do recommend using bait runners though um for carp i use them for catfish as well but because what because carp run a lot they're you know they're more like your east to west kind of runners where your catfish are more like north to south but they pull a lot more but carp which is typically run a little bit more so i like having that bait runner on so i let them run a little bit um but and that's more of a preference thing everyone kind of has their own take on it but i've been using the bait runners from the very beginning and you know they've they've never really let me down so, What's the best carp bait? The best carp bait. Um, the, I so I typically like tiger nuts. Um, tiger nuts are tiger nuts and corn. Um, they're they're very similar. 
Uh, but tiger nuts, they're probably the easiest way to say this in a non-carp language. Is um, they're almost like a they're 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 like a nut. They're like a, like a like a tiny peanut, like a tiny almond. But what's nice about them is that they're you won't get a lot of nuisance fish with them because I find mm. a lot of bluegill or sunfish <laughs> they take a lot of the corn, but you don't see that a lot with the tiger nuts. So I find that. You know, if I'm going to get a fish on the tiger, now just most of the time going to be a carp. You know, I tend to get a little more nuisance fish with the with the corn. I knew my wife would like that tiger nut. She's laughing at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Patriot Catfishers of America asked, hey, "I got to find it again." It was yeah. There you go. How do you target buffaloes? You know, I don't have buffaloes in my area, but from I do have mm. a few good friends um, who who fish for them. I know they're pretty, pretty common in Texas and they use a lot of the same stuff you use just to catch carp. I think a lot of it's just going to be, you know, if you're going to be in a area where there's Buffalo, you're probably going to catch them. If you're going to, if you're going carp fishing in arrows, Buffalo, you're going to probably catch Buffalo as well. I haven't seen a lot of differences as far as bait selections go when catching Buffalo, just from what I've seen or talked to people about. So, but grass carp on the other hand, if you ever want to catch a nice big grass carp, bread is the way to go. Bread. Okay. Do you yep. catch your own bait or, or do you, I guess you don't really, do you make your own bait or do you buy it? I make it? my own bait. Yep. I make my own bait. And what I typically use is I use a little bit of, um, you know, when you, the cereal section is going to be your best friend when you go to the store to pick up mm -hmm. your pack bait ingredients so i use a little bit of grits so i use a little bit of that quick one minute oatmeal and then i use a little bit of panko um and then i use a can a small can of cream style corn a small can of mm. whole kernel corn and i use a little bit of a jello packet in there but you don't have to use all those ingredients that's just more of a you know something i've just kind of gotten used to but the, from what Luke Nichols did from the very beginning is that you just need to get a can of panko, a can of corn, then just a one jello packet, mix it all in there into like a bucket, five gallon bucket. Make, you just want to mix it thoroughly enough until all the ingredients are mixed well. And then you just met, and then you just mold it onto your method feeder there and you'll make it like a little ball in there. Okay. And then you'll essentially put your hook into that ball and then you'll see your little, you know, your bait will be on the hair, obviously. And you just kind of launch it out there and you just wait. <laughs> and then you'll be rewarded. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, right? Uh, I think it's not a it's not a question, but uh I think uh, my next guest, Josh, said for the longest time I thought Jake ran chat cats and top tactic. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I, get, I, get, I get that a lot. And I've been trying to have Joe get more into there. And he has carp fish a little bit. So pretty much what I've been telling you guys is what I told him. And he's done pretty well with catching some carp. Well, if you're a good angler, you're a good angler. I mean. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, hey, um, I, I want to ask you one more question. I know there's a couple more questions, but I want um, some of my other guests to be able to, to yeah. answer those as well. One question that I didn't get to ask Victor was, do you think of carp as an invasive species or a homegrown species? That's the big, that's the big uh, question, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, technically they're invasive. Um, I mean, it's with, with common carp, I don't see that much of a problem. I mean, these fish were like introduced like in the 1700s. Mm -hmm. I mean, so technically, I guess you could say most fish are kind of invasive at some point just because they're introduced at some point, you know, but it's usually the Asian carp that are more of the invasive ones. I'm sure you've heard of those Asian crucian. Oh, carp. yeah. Those are the ones that are you do not want to like really like you know, throw back. If you catch those, I, I would usually just use it as bait, but I, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, I haven't heard a lot of, I've heard like people will say that like, Oh, you know, the carp will eat like the bass eggs or something like that. will eat the eggs of like other fish. But I mean, it's, you know, to be honest with you, I, I really haven't seen how it's really affected. Like a lot of the, you know, the rivers or the lakes to really be honest. I mean, it's, if anything, I see it 
you know, people just kind of hate the carp just because there's so many carp in the rivers. Yeah. They want to like take them out and kill them or like boat <laughs> them or something. So you don't mind if people cut them up for catfish bait? You know what? I would say, I mean, carp makes great bait. If I caught like a six or seven pound carp, of course, I would likely probably, I actually caught one today. Like I caught like a small five pound. I was like, oh man, this will make great catfish bait, but I have to leave tomorrow. <laughs> so I was like, I can't use it as bait right now. But, All right. Uh, last question. Cause I like it. I like how it's phrased hot pickup or sweet pickup. What do you catch the most off of? What is it? Uh, uh, hot pickup or sweet pickup? What do you catch the most on? I don't. I don't know what he means by hot pickup. To be honest. Um, you, so uh, I guess maybe um, the bait, whether it's spicy or sweet. Sweet. <clears throat> okay. Well, in the fall time, I kind of stay away from the sweeter flavors, and I kind of go more to like darker flavors. So I kind of will. Okay. Be- Maybe like <clears throat> as it gets colder, I, I kind of use more of a darker flavor. So I guess that can kind of be more into like the the spicy flavors a little bit. Um, awesome. Like I use more maple flavors and uh, nutty flavors, stuff like that. Where in the summertime, I use more of the strawberry flavors, banana, pineapple, that kind. And that's yeah. more just a preference thing. But I've done well with both. <clears throat> Well, Jake, it's a pleasure to meet you on this platform, yes, and uh, I've been watching your videos ever since I realized you're you are a twin brother to one of my favorite catfishing YouTube channels. So. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you know. You having me on the show. Oh yeah, man, I, I'm so glad you were able to come on. Hey, everybody, if you haven't checked out Top Tactic Fishing, he's uh, active military for the United States of America serving us and he's an excellent angler doesn't just catch carp catches a bunch of things uh if you like uh mudfish he catches mudfish too <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, or bowfin yeah oh yeah so uh yeah go check him out y'all uh the link is in the description go check out top tactic fishing thanks jake have a good thanks, one thanks kevin have a good one brother you too all right um before we pick up our next guest i'm gonna do my youtube channel of the week and that's Fishing with JBT. Fishing with JBT. Go check him out. Um, good channel. Putting up some some good videos here recently. Go check him out. Uh, help help each other. Thank you for those of y'all who were uh, kind of you know moderating this first time we've ever had somebody <laughs> somebody bully my guests. Uh, yeah, there's no thank you, Stan, for that too. There's no need for to talk down to my guests. They're my guests. They're my, like, you know, when people come in your house, you don't want to disrespect them when they come in your house. So thank you for those of you getting rid of those people. We don't need them in here. All right. The next person is, uh, wins the YouTube award for the longest YouTube name ever. Also (laughs) is close to 3000 subs. And that's, uh, Josh from carp, in catfish bait tips tricks and techniques did i get it right you got it right brother how's it going kevin i'm awesome man how far are you away from that three thousand? uh i don't know i can't tell (laughs) right now Um, well i just refreshed your page and it's at 2.99 so that means oh really 10 or under so if you if you like what he has to say y'all go check him out and help him get over that threshold all right i appreciate it We've had Jake talk about a lot. We've had Victor get real with us. So uh, let's hear from from, from you. I'll start off by answering the question on the uh, hot or spicy versus sweet pickups. And what that guy was referring to is uh, what a lot of guys use in my area is a Kix. It's a piece of cereal, and you put it on your hook, and we use a lot of flavors. Uh, Okay. You know, like I make and sell these myself too, but. There's a lot of different companies out there, and, uh, you know, they're really potent stuff. A couple ounces goes a long way, but uh, you can put fireball in them, um, ghost pepper extract, uh, hot sauce, things like that, and then you coat your kick cereal with it, and it soaks in. So when it's in the water and your bait breaks down, it puts like a scent cloud off of it. And in the wintertime, a lot of guys like to use hot pickups. Um I don't know if it really makes a difference myself, but uh, I well, I know just, 
go with a sweet one myself. But I know Keith from fishing and stuff. He made a video about his pack bait, and he said yeah. that um, I think it was him. He said if catfish, if you want to keep catfish off of it, you use the spicy stuff. Well, that's the thing, though. Like in my area, there's a lot of shad too, and for whatever uh. reason, a shad will hit it. And I've heard guys say that um, if you make them hot, shad won't hit it. But I've caught many of a shad <laughs> still on a piece of kicks. But I'll show you guys a little bit about my setup. I'm different. I'm the odd guy out here. I use basically catfish gear to catch my car. But hey, I've man, you're speaking our I'm, language. <laughs> hey, brother, I've been doing it since I was like 11. So we use our, uh, you know, bait casters. These are whisker sinker rods. And how I do it is I've got no roll sinker. And like uh, I fish was saying, those method feeders get ridiculously expensive real fast. I fish a lot of places where you get hung up and you break off a lot. And I can't afford to do two, three bucks a sinker, you know what I mean? So I make the no rolls and then I use a, uh, I don't use a hair rig. I use a number two curve shank with a bead on it. And that serves as what the other guy was saying is a pickup as well. Uh, once your bait breaks down, it creates a huge uh, ball around it. It just kind of does this. And when the carp come in, they just, you know, suck up everything around it and anything that's in the middle, they're going to pick up. And uh, I'll touch base on something else that I use because the other guys probably use the, uh, the rod pods with the alarms on those. I use. The hey cheap. guys, we're one second, John. We're gonna um, we're gonna let him go through his little presentation, and then when you have, we have a bunch of questions already. So, um, oh, okay. once, yeah. once you once you go through it, if you haven't answered those questions, we'll come back to them. Oh, awesome, brother! But I use what's called I call this a cheap. It's a Chinese made alarm. You've probably seen them yourself. I don't know if we should set it off, but you put it on your rod, run your line under it, and when you get a fish on. It makes a sound, but I'll also show you another thing that a lot of guys use in my area. Um, these are called straw alarms, and they clip onto your rod holder, and you put your line around it, and when, the, when it actually grabs the straw and it does that, this lights up, this lights up, and it makes a loud Oh, noise. wow. It, it's probably too loud to do on stream here. Woo! But you, can, uh, <laughs> like, you can see that. It lights up and stuff. It's got a three-way switch. The one way is just lights, and the other way is the the sound that goes with it. Um, and then I know Jake was talking about bait runners. You know, forever I use bait runners as well. And like I said, I recently, probably four years ago, started going with the catfish setup, and that's how I got into carp fishing. Actually, was catfishing, and uh, you know, and if you carp fish, you'll find out that. You'll catch a ton of beautiful cats doing it, too, because they love it as well. I've caught a few 40-pound uh, blue cats doing it. I've caught some 30, 40-pound flatheads fishing for carp. So, um, But I know Jake, he uses the hair rig. Um, I don't do that. And trying to think what else we got. I know he was talking about baits. You know, a lot of guys use uh, the oats. Okay. And then a lot of guys also use, uh, you know, panko. That's what he was talking about. Yeah. So solid bait for the wild. I like to use millet a lot. Like if people go back through my videos, I used millet a whole bunch this year. And uh, we caught tons of awesome fish. We caught koi, goldfish, um, grass carp, a bunch of mirrors, you know, some common carp and stuff like that. What kind of questions everybody got? Um, okay. And you just you went on to my next point, uh, but I want to get these questions yeah. before I can't find them anymore uh yeah josh makes awesome bait flavors for pack bait yeah you have a you have a store which we'll let we'll put that link uh in the description if somebody can put that link in the description that'd be great uh let me see kicks corn puffs i guess that was um from okay. what we we're talking about uh, corn puffs the they're a little bit more buoyant than the kicks are um, they float a little bit more the kicks floats <laughs> as well i like it because the hook i use I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. Let me pull one out of here real fast. Yeah, Keith said you're a, an American carp fisherman, like Victor was talking about. Uh, yeah, we know it, brother. But this is a curved shank hook. And uh, so anyway, when you put your kicks on there, with this particular hook, once it's in the water and it breaks down, the hook will stand on its eye. So your oh, okay. kicks will be literally standing in the middle of your bait like this, <laughs> which is, you know. Kind of gives them the first thing to pick up out of your pile. But, uh, All right. 
Let's see. I'm coming down, coming down. Should we use big hooks or small hooks for carp? Uh, well, that's the thing. If you're going to use a hair rig, you want to at least use a size four. Um, but all hooks are not created equal. As you guys probably already know, if you buy a size four in one, it could be larger than a size four in another. Um, so I typically use a size six if I use a hair rig. But the only time I use one is with tiger nuts, which is uh, like Jake was talking about. And Jake, thanks for your service. If you're still watching, um, you know, we appreciate that for sure, brother. I fish, never seen your channel, but I'm going to check it out now. So, and uh, two hooks or one? I just use one hook. I found that with uh, two hooks, I was digging the hook out of myself or the net more than anything <laughs> else. So just one. I would, <laughs> no reason for two because it's not going to help you, I don't think. So. Ryan asked, do carp go deep in the winter like catfish? Uh, yeah, I think everything goes deep in the wintertime. Um, now, if you're fishing a place that's shallow, I guess, or, you know, that's got some really shallow water, um, I've had times in the winter where, you know, around here in Indiana, it'd get up to like 70 degrees. <laughs> like, it's kind of rare, but it kind of heats up. Like, if you're in a river or something, you know, might heat up a spot, they'll come into that. But for it's the most good, part, I'd say deep. Deep. Yeah. And how deep is deep, just relative to your river, like the deepest part of your river or lake? Well, I fish a lot of lakes mainly. <laughs> and I know, I think it was I fish. He was saying, he was saying a lot of time, he fishes shallow, I think he said, mm. which is kind of different than me. Um, some of my best holes are, are 20 foot deep. Uh, you know, okay. But like I said, I think, is he in a different country? I think <coughs> he's from a different country too. So could, mm. could make cool. a difference. Um, the weekend angler asked the prepared cart baits sold at tackle shops worth a try or just a waste of money. Um, I don't know what kind of bait you're looking at at a tackle shop. I sell pre-made cart baits that, I mean, they work. You can watch the videos and see it's the same thing I use, but there's also places that sell like some cheesy kind of stuff that I've never seen anybody catch a fish on. But if it's like a pack bait, like, uh, or a method bait, a lot of people call it, then it's probably going to be okay for you. What about the little Walmart baits that they sell? Kind of, you don't want to use, use it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. curious because I may or may not have bought two packs of those. Uh... <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Um, get with me and I'll send you some. Uh, okay. Some stuff that I make. But it, when you, if you're new to carp fishing, I would probably just use corn to start out with. And the reason being, um, you know, like with pack baits, if you're new to it, a lot of people have a hard time when they first start, because if you don't pack it correctly, I mean, you just throw it off your hook every time you know, or your method feeder. Um, I've been doing it, like I said, since I was 11 or 12. Um, like I pack mine around my hook, you know, where other guys pack it around their sinker and I can pack it around my hook and still cast it a hundred yards, you know? Hmm. Uh, where some guys they just you know i it just takes time it, it takes practice packing it uh, you got to get the right fill once you get it you're good to go but some people it takes a pretty good while to get it down pat it down. okay what uh bait do you use for buffaloes for buffs boy buffs love everything really bean mill is probably the most well-known buff bait i would say in my opinion <laughs> anyway um a lot of people like the flavor of lime uh, for buffs too, but for me, I've never really found it to make much of a difference as far as, you know, going lime versus peach or banana or whatever. I've caught buffs on pretty much every flavor myself, but they love bean meal. Um, they love bean sour meal. bean meal, actually. A lot of guys will make it up. Some guys will make it up six months or a year in advance and let it set outside and sour, and, you know, kind of ferments and smell like rotten beer and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, buffs love it. So, <clears throat> love it, too. Do you understand this question? Recipe for a fast breakdown, babe. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I'm the babe or if you meant bait. Uh, but, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but, so I, uh, think you meant, I think you meant bait. I was just uh, fooling. You know, the best thing to do, it'd be hard to just say one over the, you know, mean the screen, but I have probably 50 videos on different bait recipes. Um, check out one of the bean mill ones. Bean mill breaks down pretty quick. So you're looking at probably a minute and a half or less. All right. Um, let's see. Do you fish a lot of tournaments for carp? 
No, I gave that up. Um, these guys are probably talking about like uh, pay lake fishing is my guess. And I, I don't really pay lake anymore. Um, sometimes I'll do like a stream at the one that's by my house when they're closed down, but I don't fish for money anymore. So I gave it up years ago. All right. So I, y'all, I just, uh, I lost the, uh, I was trying to hold back the chat and it just went down on me. So if I missed your question, go ahead and, and retype it. Um, let's see. And Kevin also, I mean, like I said, I'm going to give away some flavors if you want to pick a winner for, I'll give away three bottles to one person if they're. All right. Why don't you go them. over? Why don't you go over that and and you know what your store name is and how they can contact you and and okay. while we're doing that, um, you know you we can hold up what you're going to give away. Well, let me see if can you guys read that on stream or no? It's, oh yeah, Pineapple Express. Yeah, and the name of the store is Get Bent Baits and Flavors on Facebook. So whoever wins. Shoot me a message there with your address, and I'll ship them out to you. Awesome. I did remember one question. Do you target carp on sonar? No, I have i don't even have a boat, and I've never had one of those deepers. So, Do you know anybody wish, that does it? Um, I don't really know anybody that fishes, you know, with a, with a boat for carp. Now, I do know some people that take, like, a kayak mm. and, got, you know, a depth finder and fish finder on there. Well, you're about to know your first one because I'm I'm got the recipe. I got the uh, the strawberry pack bait stuff in the garage, and I'm going to try it this weekend for the first time. <laughs> All right, y'all. We have 97 awesome people in the chat, so we're going to do pick a number between one and 300 when I say go. And uh, if some of you lovely moderators in here want to figure out who picked it uh that would be great can you see the chat at all josh i sure can yeah okay well that's not I'm gonna watching work. The youtube anyway. is that what you're talking about the yeah YouTube i'm gonna show? write down i'm gonna go ahead and write down my number okay all right i've written down a number already all right on your mark is set go and i think we got let's see i'm curious about that second bait alert where can they be found Second bait alert. I'm not sure what we're talking about. Maybe the one with the straw coming out the top. Oh, the alarm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna put my thing in the chat here for the um the second. Oh, the second bait alert. Where did it? Well, Mike, you can get those um, from North Carolina. What is it? Full pole beeper sells them. There's a Smith Alarms. These were actually uh, <laughs> donated to the channel. I'm gonna be giving these away in a video on my channel in the future. Um, these are called Never Miss Bite Alarms. Um, you can get on Facebook and search that, and you'll find the guy's name was Timothy Mason Jackie. Great guy. Um, I only used one one time just so I could kind of get a, a thing for the video when I do a giveaway. But uh, you need a tilt stand is what I call it. I don't have anywhere I'm at or I can show you guys. Have you seen a tilt stand before, Kevin? No, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the one with the pole in the water and it – Puts the tip of the pole in the water. Yeah, if well, I yeah. Think you were watching my stream the other day, if you kind of yep. see, that's what I use. Mm -hmm. So you need and that. Those. That keeps your um, like when you put alarms, that keeps the wind from triggering it, right? Uh yeah. This uh, well, yeah, like these right here, the the wind won't set those off. Um, on one of these, if you get your line super tight mm -hmm. and it's windy, it may set it off. Yeah. But you know, if I the these are only like, I don't know, a couple bucks on Amazon, and the wind won't set those off. So that's why I love them, and they're compact. What I'm doing is sometimes when I'm fishing, right. if I get fish on, I'll clip that bad boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? uh, whatever. Just don't cast with it on your rod because it's no. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best budget rod reel for carp? Best budget rod and reel. Well, it's probably going to sound stupid, but. I would honestly say like a tiger jobber from Walmart. I mean, if you're on a strict budget, I think they're like 20 bucks, you know, uh, like I fish was saying, you don't need expensive gear by any means to catch <clears throat> any fish. Really. Um, it's nice to have. I, I will say that once you get better stuff, better rods, um, better reels, I mean, it, it, Just like it doesn't make fishing. you catch more fish, but it's more reliable, I guess you'd say. <laughs> Yep. And you feel good, you know, you're proud to have it. You take better care of it. Um, 
But you don't need expensive gear. Um, Kevin, then I think you got one of these bad boys, don't you? Catfish Simo? Yep, I sure do. Okay, I got a video. I'm gonna do on that. I'm gonna give that bad boy away too. You like yours? Oh, yeah, I like it. I yeah, like, okay. It's not my favorite, but I like it. I found some stuff out about it that kind of unimpressed me, but. Hmm. Well, we'll look forward to that review. Yeah, so if you like sure. Catfish for Sumo, sure. uh, Fishing and Stuff wants to know where you live. Uh, Indiana, brother, Indiana. Indiana. Fishing and Stuff, I love your channel, brother. If that's who I'm thinking of, I love your channel, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you pick numbers, go ahead and stop. And then I'll have my moderators. Uh, let's. I'll go ahead and type stop in there. Boom. Um, so I'll have my moderators. Uh Give me the number. Uh, the number is 92. So the person with the number closest to 92 without going over, um, you will win uh, some bait sense from um, from cat, carp and catfish bait tips, tricks, and techniques. Can you tell I've practiced that a few times tonight? <laughs> I need to change the name. It's a little bit too long. Okay. I was waiting for Guinness Book to send me my record for that, but they never did. So I better change it to something short. <laughs> so yeah i went out and bought um the strawberry jello the panko and yep. the um the the sweet corn yep. and i'm gonna tr i'm gonna try that uh it only cost me i think the sweet corn was 68 cents the um the panko was like i don't know three dollars maybe yep and then the jello was 98 cents so you know i'm out four or five bucks yeah and that, that's not bad, really, if you think about it, you know. Um, I know you do some videos with the, uh, the what is it, the chicken and stuff with the jello. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm sure you're familiar with that. Stuff. I'm telling you what, yesterday I fished for 11 and a half hours, and I caught three dink catfish. They didn't want any type of bait. I had three different kinds of bait out there. What? So it looks like Jason Ward uh, has won. Jason Ward had 89 uh jason ward jason ward uh so unless i hear different jason ward why don't you contact uh Somebody Josh. Said they had 95 i thought yeah that's over though you can't go over oh i thought you said 96 for some reason no i said 92 oh okay i wasn't paying attention brother. Sorry. that's all right <laughs> hey you're not you're not trying to win they all heard it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I didn't pick a number. So. <laughs> um, How do you feel about um, rice pack bait? Rice got a couple of videos on it. Um, back when that was kind of first introduced to carp uh, in our area, you know, they loved it. It kind of looks like maggots. And, you know, a lot of people from other countries, they'll use maggots for carp. And that's what rice looks like when it breaks down. Awesome. So it is, it is a good bait. Um, but I think there's just better stuff out there now. Um in my opinion anyway gotcha uh do you recommend pre-baiting ahead of time for a few days at the spot you're going to i think sometimes that's a that's not you have to check your state laws uh yeah i know in indiana we can chum um i think it looks like it says jamie asked that question jamie i'll tell you my take on that um i never have enough time to go pre-bait i wish i did but i just don't have the time i'm sure it couldn't hurt anything but if, you know, like Jake was saying, he watches uh, Catfish and Carp. Um, he did a video where he put like a corn feeder on a tree limb. Yep. Um, I don't know if you saw that or not. But, I did, yeah. Okay. Well, it didn't appear to make any difference to me mm -hmm. because he caught less fish in that video than I've seen him catch in other videos. <laughs> so uh, I, I think it's like, and you know how you were saying you caught three catfish that were dinks or whatever. I think it just goes like this. Sometimes it doesn't matter where you fish or what you got. You ain't gonna catch fish. <laughs> so, That's uh, right. I get people well, ask, "What's the secret to catching big fish?" You have to fish water with big fish. You can you fish go. water that doesn't have them; you'll never catch them. So, Do you um, always fish on the bottom, or are there instances where you'd fish under a bobber? Uh, well, I fish bottom only. Now there are a couple carp rigs that actually allow your uh, your bait to kind of float up to a set level. But I have used corn on a bobber before when I was younger and. I caught some carp that way, but I'm a bottom guy, and I think probably 99.99% of carp fishermen go that way. So I've heard it makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, like I've seen people fly fish for them. I mean, that looks like a really. Bite. So oh yeah, I couldn't imagine catching one on a fly rod. It'd be fun. So 
So what time of year is best for trophy carp? Uh, well, trophy carp would be probably spring during the spawn. Um, you know, any time you get fish that are full of eggs, they obviously gain more weight. So um, that's my favorite time to fish. Fall's a good time too, but we got that kind of cut short this year, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still fall down here. Yeah, it's almost yeah. summer down here. It was 83 degrees the other day. Oh, Lord, we had like 50-mile-an-hour winds today, and it was cold up here. So. Miss Becca asked, do you cattle cube the area the night before? I think you just answered that, but uh, I'm interested to know, do people cattle cube for, for carp? Oh, yeah, they do. Heck okay. Yeah. yeah, you can buy it from uh, if what she's talking about. It's the little uh, cubes you buy from TSC. And, okay. Uh, you can throw them in the water, and they break down. But like I said, if you got time to pre-bait, I, it couldn't hurt anything, but – um, a lot of people, you know, just don't have the time to do it. So. Do you make your own goo? Oh, you know it, brother. Check my videos, man. Got one on there <laughs> showing how to do it. Yeah. Like, it's you, funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm constantly checking his channel. He's at 2.99. 2.99. We got 95 people in here. Um, only sub if you're going to watch his stuff, though. If you're not interested, then, then don't sub. Um but if you think you might be interested, in it, he's get does great videos. He goes live all the time and interacts with his audience when he's live. So, um, you know, if you want some new buddies or or you want to watch somebody live fish, go subscribe and check him out. That's yeah, all right, Becca. It. No big deal. Appreciate all right, it. So we cool. got twenty nine ninety three um, on my end. So everybody that has subbed, I appreciate you all. Seven more. Yeah, Seven. yeah. What's your personal best carp? Well, that's a good question. I wish I knew the answer to it. Got, <laughs> you know, I, so I've been doing it for so long before we had, uh, you know, like phones and all that stuff to take pictures. Uh, I've got several pictures of, you know, mid 30 pound carp, but I, I guess probably around mid 30s. I, like I said, I really. That's a big I, carp. I, in my area, that's a huge carp. But, you know, some places like around Del Hollow, people catch 40 pounders. Um, Michigan, Lake Michigan, there's some big ones in there, but yeah, in my area, um, there, that's a pretty good sized carb, a 30 pounder. So. Do you ever use hemp rigs? Hemp? Oh, I use hemp in my pack bait sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Um, hemp is a, you know, what you do is you boil it or pressure cook it. And I mean, it, it puts off a scent and, uh, yeah, but if you don't boil it or pressure cook it, it'll float. So you definitely want to make sure you do that before you put it in there. Hey, buddy. Congratulations. 3,000 subscribers. Really? Awesome. Yep. Man. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. Boom. <laughs> thank you. Thank awesome. you. We appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, man. I got one more question for you. It's kind of like the, the question for everybody, and I hate that we missed Victor on it. Cause I'm sure he had, he would have <laughs> a good opinion, but uh, leave an Asian carp out of it. How do you feel about people who say carp is invasive and we should kill them all? You know what? I, I actually meant to chime in on that and had forgot about it. So that's great. Um, well, you, as you do know, the Asian carp are invasive. Um, common carp would really be considered a naturalized species. Now um, they've been here long enough and they don't really overpopulate. They just get a bad rap because, um, well, mainly bass fishermen give them such a, a bad rap because they don't like them. But, I mean, I, most of your places that have trophy carp, like we were talking about, Del Hollow, have trophy bass, catfish, smallmouth. I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand with the body of water, you know. And I know Victor was saying, uh, you know, that don't fish places with clear water. And I've kind of found that to be different over here, too, because some of my best spots, the water is crystal clear, you know, um, like Del Hollow, the water down there. It's just, you know, it's a mile deep, man. It's clear as a bell. Um, same way with the place I fish called Summit Lake. It looks like you could drink out of it, you know. It looks mm -hmm. like it's, uh, but I think they're considered more of a naturalized species. Um, now, there are still versions like grass carp, um, like in my area. Those are controlled by the DNR. Mm. They're sterilized before they're put in, and they keep, you know, the lakes clean and stuff like that. And if you catch one and, like, you actually kill it or anything, you can face a fine for it. Mm. But there are also areas of the United States where grass carp 
you know, were kind of like yeah. Asian carp. They were brought over here unsterilized, and they're an invasive species as well. They can really take over a body of water and uh, just destroy it in a matter of no time. So does it bother you that people cut them up for bait? Um, brother, <laughs> to me, it's like this. You know, some people hunt, some don't. I'm, I believe in do you, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't hate people for any reason. <laughs> so, hey, that me neither, brother. <laughs> vote for who you want. Do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? We're all here. Just be, just be a good person and, exactly. and, and treat that's people right. right. Yeah, you know, treat people how you want to be treated, and that's all that matters. So. Amen, amen. Well, um, I think he's you're in Indiana. Somebody asked that. Yep. Um, Cool. So uh, I got one more guest sitting in here and we're already at an hour 10 because these these shows are so awesome. Like we could sit here and talk for hours and hours. Um, you get you get people together that love fishing no matter what it is. And they'll just talk and talk and talk. <laughs> oh, for sure, man. You can go all, 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 yeah. all, all, all so. JP Slayer Racing says you're at 3001 now. That's all awesome. All right, man. JP. Like I said, guys, I appreciate y'all. Stay tuned. Whoever won the flavors, <laughs> hit me up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Get bent, Baits and Flavors on Facebook. <laughs> or just hit the page that's the same as my uh, YouTube channel name, and we'll get you get you three of them sent out to you. So we appreciate you. Awesome. Kevin, all right. peace out, brother. Let's yeah, man. All right, brother. buddy. Have a good night. Oh, oh, what's happening? What's happening? What? Oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> Michael Murillo. What's happening, brother? Okay, so I missed the first 10 minutes of the show. Because <laughs> you were getting doing? sugar, <laughs> apple pies, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, dinner went a little long. The kids didn't want to leave their grandma and grandpa's house. It was a loud <laughs> Very disappointed exit, but yeah. we're home now. They're but John Murillo said that that last one was a great interview, so I don't know if he's still watching now. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> hey, I, I did want to wrap up. a lot of Josh's stuff, but yeah, that guy's catfish great. headhunters. I'm I'm repping your uh your gear here, catfish headhunter. Shout out, go check him out. All right, so Michael Murillo's been on the show a few times. He's talked about reels. We've had an in-depth interview of who is Michael Marillo. But I think in this situation, we would describe you as an avid carp fisherman. Like, this is what you love to do, right? Yes. This is and, now, now that I don't play hockey anymore. This is it. <laughs> okay. Other than being a dad and a husband, this is what you this is what you love the most. Oh, I, I leave them at home. Every chance I get, I go fishing by myself, and they know it too. They're not they're not too happy about it, but they know it. So you're really into the the English style of carp fishing, right? I've really gotten into it in the last two three years. <clears throat> um, just just like our our uh, buddy there, Top Tactic. I try to keep it extremely simple, and uh, just just like some of the other guys had said, you know, there is. There might not be a better catfishing rig out there than the Carolina rig. And actually, the Carolina rig has gotten me my three biggest carp. And I did not use pack bait. I use. But you saw them, corn. though. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, there's something I cannot believe that I've lived long enough to where I'm actually going to disagree with Victor. Because <laughs> I've watched his videos since I can remember being on YouTube. And uh, I could see him. The water was as clear as could be, and uh, I've always said if I can see them, I can catch them, and I'll throw anything I got at them just to try, although, you know, I've been proven wrong there a few times, too. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the three biggest the three biggest common carp I've ever caught were caught on night crawlers, sweet corn, and it was untreated, and uh, the other one was on was on feed corn. And they were all on Carolina rigs with two or three hot circle hooks. So circle hooks too. So not only the clear water, but you can use circle hooks. Yes. So uh, that's why I said, I was like, hey, you ever tried carp fishing? And uh, didn't mean to start a, a, a vicious war amongst the species <laughs> here <laughs> between this nice community that that I truly believe is built on you know mutual earned respect and the love of fishing but the battle 
that a carp can give you is definitely worth a try. And if you can see them, that's all I'm saying. If you can see right. them, why not try to catch them? Right. Well, and it's not even about this, you know, a battle. I think that's what makes America great is that we can disagree, but we can still get along. We can still be, uh, you know, human towards each other. And I kind of like the different theories on it. Um, you know, it makes sense that a fish wouldn't want, would, would kind of be scared of you in clear water. Cause I've been fishing for panfish before. And, uh, you know, when I could see them, they would, they wouldn't bite the hook at all. But then when I couldn't, they would bite it more often. But, uh, yeah, everybody's saying that you have a calming voice. Uh, they say, can sardine dough baits, can you use sardine dough baits? Jo Joseph Cena fishing has had a, a bunch of awesome questions tonight. Thank you, sir. Um, sardine dough baits for carp. Oh, you'd have to ask one of those other guys that question. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I have been trying to take what we used to do and add it to what I've been researching for the last four or five years to make, make my current um, tactics Tactic. or, or presentation, whatever you'd like to, whatever you'd like to say. Um, mm -hmm. So touching upon that, uh, carp fishing can be good with kids, Jason Ward. Um, what I will say is if you can get a kid on a carp, they're probably going to fish the rest of their life because it is craziness the the fun of the line going left the line going back right the fish the uh, carp will jump out of the water uh this this last year i caught one it was 17 pounds 10 ounces and it jumped out of the water like a i don't know what like a marvel <laughs> i was shocked my dad was there and he was like was that the fish? I was like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, well, if it can jump out of the water, it's not that big. It was really windy that day. So we had these giant, you know, I mean, maybe they were two foot waves, but I think that the water dropped out from under underneath the fish. And that's what really got the whole fish out of the water. And I'm like, how on earth mm. can I catch this? I knew it was over 15 pounds. It's like, oh my gosh, this thing's going <laughs> to fall off. It's going to break off because it, it shouldn't be doing that. So it's, yeah, carp fishing is really exciting. Um, to answer the question on the screen, yes, I do. I, I don't boil it, actually. I have boiled it before, but it seemed to take forever. I bought a pressure cooker just so that, <laughs> that way I can prepare feed corn. So I've never cooked anything <laughs> else in this pressure cooker, although I've seen a bunch of great recipes. Anna, if you have any recipes mm -hmm. for me, I probably I just some. I just used our yeah. our Instapot tonight, actually. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> funny I need some recipes that. then. And apparently, uh, the Google moderators are moderating the the channel tonight and deleting people's comments for what they seem is appropriate. <laughs> no, to each his own. Yeah, I've had some people say that they've their comments have been deleted. But uh, let's see. Uh, my experience is that you have to make very slow movements and try to stay as still as possible once the baits are out so they don't spook when they come to eat. Is that your – I guess he's fishing from a boat maybe? Uh, you know, I don't, I, don't know about, I don't know about boat fishing, but what I will say about bank fishing is that uh, we would usually put somewhere between as few as two and as many as 12 of us on a bank. And there would wow. be ghetto blasters. So there <laughs> ghetto would be music. Blasters. <laughs> there would be music. There would be good times and talking. I I tell people all the time when they walk by me on the bank and and kind of scold their children to be real quiet. Be real quiet. That guy's fishing. I'm like, your grandpa lied to you. He just wanted it to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. I was like, the, these fish that I'm fishing for don't care. I was like, maybe the people that are trying to get the bluegill that are really close, maybe you could spook a bluegill. But <laughs> I I encourage kid to throw rocks and have a good time and all this and that. So a lot of the parents get mad at me when they walk by and I say that kind of stuff. And the kid's like, he mm. said I could throw rocks. I think he, he said no, and he meant in clear water. Does it matter in clear water? To, so the guy who asked the question, uh, Kentucky Big Cats and Bourbon, he said in clear water, you have to um, stay still so you don't spook them. You know, I, I probably try not to <clears throat> cast a shadow or you know drop anything into the water or anything right. when it is clear, just, just to 
you know, better my chances. So uh, what pound test line is best for carp? And when fishing by yourself, how many rods do you use for carp? Okay, so I'll tell you guys a story about the rods that I use. Just because I, I don't know if I admitted this to you yet or not, Kevin. I know Elson knows. Um, in Iowa, you, you're allowed two rods, and you can purchase a third rod allowance. And I kind of got in the habit of using four rods. So mm -hmm. I, I happened to have a nice little friendly visit. Don't you know that Google, Google is listening right now? <laughs> uh, that's okay, because I already paid the fine. And, <laughs> okay. Uh, and I want to thank my cousin Jeff for making me feel better about that event because he, he deemed that a good event and, and declared me a uh, carp and catfishing outlaw since I was <laughs> given a citation, which I'm glad that I can reveal here and maybe not on Dockery's show because I'm sure I'd get chewed up and spit out over there for that. But you, uh, you are supposed to, I mean, just follow whatever regs your state has i know Luke yeah. can fish with as many as he wants but me too <laughs> i i can watch over probably seven and still feel fairly confident about what i'm doing but uh obviously four or less is probably ideal more ideal so i won't miss any right activity because i don't often use the bait alarms i only right. use that kind of stuff if I'm, I'm going to have a, a long session and anymore, it seems like if I can go fish, it, it can be for as short as 45 minutes or an hour and a half. And then I got to go. So I got to take weeks off. So that way I can get whole day sessions. In. All right, y'all let's not talk about Google no more. Let's ask Michael Murillo some questions about carp fishing. What do you have any tackle you want to show us? Uh, that no, hasn't actually, been already shown. I, Actually, I really like what all the other guys have shown. And uh, since I'm preparing a package for you tomorrow, I want it to be a surprise. So I'm not going to show you anything <laughs> that I'm going to put inside there. But what I will awesome. say is that I have all four of my tackle bags out. So okay. hopefully it'll be hopefully it'll be a good surprise <laughs> filled with a few extra so, yeah. things that maybe you didn't think about. He's so excited that I'm going to try carp fishing. And I was looking on Amazon. I was like, what should I get? I don't even know where to start. And, uh, you know, I was going to just use a Carolina rig. And I started asking about plastic corn. And he said, do you just want me to send you some pre-rigged rigs? And I was like, uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> and then I can study yours and then do my own. <laughs> it's pretty It's pretty therapeutic. And Tone, Tone and I talk about that a lot during the winter time when we don't have anything to do, then uh, it's just nice to make up a bunch of rigs. And um, like like was said earlier, you can order them. You know, amazing spot is obviously Amazon. Very specific to carp is bigcarptackle.com. Um, I don't know. My budget with them is probably over <laughs> well, $1,200 a year. And, wow. Uh, I, so when I are you going to start doing some carp live streaming man uh actually the other day ace went live and he he just had an open mic going on i happened to be fishing in one of my favorite spots mm. so i i hopped on and the the stream was good everything looked great i i showed him the spot a little bit so it was it's one of the magnificent things of having a bunch of fishing buddies who are always on youtube <laughs> so definitely next may i would expect that i'd probably purchase the the stream yard software and, and try to get everybody a little bit of carp fishing but you can do it for free now you don't have to pay for the pay version oh i don't have to mm -mm. Oh, great that's good you just get I mean, you'll just uh, you'll have their stung the other day so i need to save some money so that's <laughs> awesome no you just you'll have their um their logo where my where mine is right over there Above your uh, head. She's working on a logo. So if she comes up <laughs> with something that's really rad, then maybe I'll just have to pay for it so I can put a cool. logo up. <laughs> what's your what's your favorite bait? Uh I I've really gotten attached to these boilies. I like I like the simplicity. I do feel <laughs> uh as stated before by by our awesome guest that I feel my hook ratio has gone up. And I believe my average weight has gone up. 
um, per fish that I catch. <laughs> I will say pineapple and coconut boilies mm. are my favorite. It sounds and delicious. Unfortunately, that ruins a little <laughs> bit of your surprise tomorrow. So, <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll, okay. see, you'll see some stuff in there. <laughs> I use bait runners, don't you? Yes, I use bait runners. I, I, I don't feel I can cast the the bait casters this far, and I gave up on that. So I, I stick with the bait running spinning reels. Um, Michael, are we going to collab next year at Icar Icaria? Icaria. Yeah, like Icaria. Uh, Icaria. It's, it's not too far from me, <clears throat> so I I will say yes. And I thought Lynn was going to get down on that too. So we may. We may get some Iowa footage for you all next year. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope I can find some carp. That's awesome. Let's see. Um, nylon let net versus rubber net. And I was saving this question. I hope whoever asked it isn't gone. But will you talk about carp care? I know that's huge for serious carp fishermen, really taking care of the fish. Um, so this kind of goes along with that. My net is a standard nylon net. I use a Frabel 42. Um, I've seen the rubber nets in the past. I, I never owned one. And it was mainly because the, the hooks are just so sharp. Everybody's like, oh, it, it won't hook it. I've seen hooks go through those things. So to me, it was just like, oh, I got to have to cut that hook off and, and waste gear where the other ones is I've never stuck a hook in any of those little nylon ropes. Um, you mentioned carp care. That's awesome. Some of the things that uh, we, we put on the list there were just uh, to show you guys, there's some pretty neat gear out there. Maybe mm -hmm. you could use some, maybe you'd like some, I mean, you guys catch some monstrous catfish and the, the carp care itself is pretty cool to help. You know, take it easy on the fish. You've seen it in video after video, live stream after live stream. People dropping these poor fish and, and they hit the ground or they hit rocks or wherever they're at. And you just feel bad about it. But, you know, we, we want to take care of the fish. We want to catch that fish again <clears throat> five years down the line, you know, when it's 10% heavier <laughs> and it's <laughs> <fish is longer. laughs> um, So there's, there's some good examples in that. And I didn't double check the list. But like, uh, there's nice. Mats. Well, I put one in there. Yeah, the mat, and I put that one in there, and then I put the um, my uh, weighing sling in there from mm -hmm. Easterland Drift Socks. I love that thing, man. So yeah. I, I would I would recommend that. I actually own two weighing slings, but they're also called retention slings. Here's uh -huh. an option for some of you guys who fish <laughs> all night long. At night. It's kind of dark. Maybe you feel you don't get the best photographs. This retention sling, you can keep the fish in there, and it, it just gets really wide. It, it's like a gigantic, I don't know, rectangle tank, but um, and you zip it up. The top of it zips up, side zip up, so the fish can't get out. So then you could keep the fish overnight. Let's say you fish all night, and then you go home in the morning. You keep the fish all night right there it's safe it's in the water you can put it out you know as, as far out in the water as you as you want to keep it the, there's floats on top of it like patriots bobbers you know the floats mm. so that way it, it keeps it up there so it's not going to get messed up it's not going to get hung up then and you know the nice sunlight in the morning you can take some amazing photographs of your fish and uh film the release and, and and maybe add you know some more great content to to what you guys already provide. Great question here, and uh, you know we we take for granted that a lot of us have watched catfish and carp and some other popular YouTubers. But what is a boilie exactly? So it is a it is a round dough bait, and I choose not to make them. I know Outdoors Addiction Jesse said that he he makes some and he might send me some. And he's got my address now. I'm looking forward <laughs> to that next year. But uh, it's just a round dough bait. And then if you go back to Top Tactics display, 
you you take a baiting needle and pierce the dough bait and then hook it to the hair and there's a little stopper on. yeah yep. Yep. and that's where that's where i think it kind of discourages people about carp fishing you know with those types of baits and with hair rigs because there's so many parts there's so many little mm -hmm. pieces of tackle and it's not that there's so many because you know cat fishermen if you really get into all the gear like you know we were discussing a couple weeks ago uh you have a lot of parts too but it's just the size of them are really scaled down tim lena said if he if he made pineapple boilies he would eat them with milk like breakfast cereal <laughs> You'd be surprised, but I caught I caught my biggest channel cat on a pineapple boilie. <laughs> nice. Uh, Joseph, another great question. Do carp taste good? Been fishing for them my whole life. Never eaten one. Never eaten one. Put them back in the water. Yeah. Have you caught a mirror carp yet? I've, I've never caught one. I've only seen one. Well, no, I don't know. Was that a mirror carp tone? I think you caught, I think Tone caught a mirror carp once and I was like, what's wrong with it? I thought it had like a genetic <laughs> disease. She's like, it's just a different one. Grandpa would always call them German carp. And we asked him about it this year. And he said he only called them German carp because someone else called them German carp. But it's because he actually is, I think it was a buddy. I don't think it was a cousin. Maybe it was a cousin. Well, everybody's a cousin somehow. So uh, <laughs> with our family, everybody's a cousin somehow. Um, I think he was, I think he said that he actually fished because he was over there during like World War II times. So I think that's why he called them German carp because they look that way. Catfish think they taste good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, think I can ever see. cut a carp up. And I've cut tons of small ones i've got tons of small ones i just zach I don't think said I it's, the heart to do it uh zach said it's a white fish um a light flavored white fish with a good bit of pin bones throughout gotcha yeah i've heard buffalo ribs and i think um down there in louisiana uh catfish and carp he went out and he they caught them some carp and they, they cut them ribs out and they put them on there and, and, and fried them up or whatever but, but yeah, I, th I think that, that they ate them a buffalo on there. Um, eating carp. Best techniques to fillet a carp, uh, season it, and put it on a wood plank and grill it. After about 10 minutes, throw away the, the carp and eat the wood plank. <laughs> I've heard that for a bunch of different fish, though. So I don't know if it's so much the, 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 the type of fish. It's just the type of board you need. <laughs> yeah, I, I recommend a cedar plank. The cedar plant. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, um, so let's talk about um, the different species of carp. Uh, you know, we got the common carp, which is, uh, I guess, is that everywhere in the U.S. I since it's common. Are. I think they are everywhere in the U.S. And like we okay. said earlier, I think they've been here since seven <clears throat> mid seventeen hundreds. Mm-hmm. Uh, John said that West. they're good smoked. They're great smoked. Oh, nope, not that one. There we go. See, and my dad says that, but I don't know if he's ever eaten any either. I mean, we just, he we just, just catch him and he throw just, him back. <laughs> he just put that seasoning on there now and beat the pot and tell him to get in. Luke put that all teriyaki right. stuff all over it. Now that teriyaki. sounds good. Smoked teriyaki <laughs> something sounds good. Every state except for Alaska. Okay, cool. All right, and then you got mirror carp. Which you've never caught one, so they I guess they are uh a little rare, more rare. Yes, I believe so. And they're you guys really gotta see them. They look just incredible. Gigantic scales. There's a picture one one right behind my picture on this side of me, right here. There's a picture of one. And I think that's the common carp right there. I think that's the grass carp yep. up here. Yep. So grass I carp. That the, I think that the grass carp may be what you've seen. Uh, you said they were really, really up on top of the water and they were like four feet long. That sounds like a grass carp to me. I don't know that a common carp could get to being four foot long. I, I've never mm -hmm. seen them that long. But yeah, the grass carp, 
they get really long and they can they can get close to a hundred pounds. Yeah, I've seen so one in a back creek. I've seen one in a back creek when I was a kid. I my dad had a, I had a wooden boat with an uh Evan Rude 9.9 you know tiller motor on the back and he would take his boat out and you know I would take my boat out and he just watched me you know learning how to drive a boat and uh I was sitting there with my my brim buster and one hit the top of the water and it was bright gold and it had to be about three or four foot long I had never seen I, I didn't know what it was at the time but now that I'm older I can you know I, it was a big carp uh, I've also hooked several of them on a brim buster using worms and they, they pop the line every time, you know, they're really powerful fish. Well, if it was golden, I'd have to believe it was a common carp. Mm. Now I got, oh, okay. It. Now I can't wait to come down and find you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find these fish. Well, and that's funny because it was in a back Creek that has current running in and out of it. And it only doesn't have current when the tide is slack when, you know, we're in between tides. So, um, you know, maybe that's not the best place to fish for them, but I, I'm going to try this area um, that I call the stop and I catch a bunch of catfish there. I've caught my PB flathead there. My next biggest flathead, a bunch of big blues. Uh, it's actually where I'm going to do a video this weekend. And uh, this may be a good segue into that. Y'all, I'm thinking about doing a 24 hour live stream fishing challenge this weekend on friday uh through saturday um i've debated on whether to do it over the weekend because i have to start after work on friday or whether i would do it on tuesday morning to wednesday morning next week or not next week the week of thanksgiving um in order to start in the morning and end in the morning uh but you know, what do you guys think about that 24 hour live stream? I know Mike, I had alluded to you and I, I, I talked to, to Norm about it a little, little, a little bit. So, uh, what do you think about that, Mike? You think it's crazy? You think people would actually watch it? I know one person who's crazy enough to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you can tell by the, by the, uh, comments. There he is. I was thinking Jesse could probably stay awake 24 <laughs> hours to watch fishing. I know I, I know I would miss some of it, but yeah. uh, I mean, has anybody ever even thought of doing this? this I know like, that this is I like know a that massive original idea, right? I mean, I've I never know. heard of anybody doing this. I know people have um, done 24 hour challenges and put the the video up. And they'll just like fast forward through it and have the minutes at the bottom. But I'm talking about a live stream for 24 yeah. hours. Um, yeah, I'm going to need – Chunky said I'll need eight or nine monster drinks. Somebody else said that I'll need – there you go. Ricky said it too. Um, I would need some Potomac Punch uh, to stay awake. But, uh, you know, I, I'd make a night of it. And, you know, I'm sure that – in the wee hours of the morning, there wouldn't be much of a conversation going on and there wouldn't be much of fish caught either. Um, you know, in those, in those wee hours of the morning, but it would be in the spot. I would anchor up and I'd be in one spot. Once it got dark, I don't want to move, uh, and lose signal. And I don't want to move in general because I don't want to lose signal and drop out. But, uh, I think it would be awesome. Um, I don't know how my body would take it, but, uh, you know, I'd obviously be on the boat and have a sleeping bag or whatever, something to stay warm. I don't know. <laughs> I'm would open to bring, ideas. Would you bring anybody with you? I don't know of anybody who would want to. <laughs> none, of your, none of your buddies would do that? Yeah, I have buddies, but I don't know if they're that great of buddies. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They're awesome. Um, well, and the thing is, is like two of the guys that go fishing with me a lot, you know, work for the church. And so, you know, they, they have to be at their best on Sunday morning. So, uh, you know, and one of the, the past pastor Sean that comes with me a lot, he, uh, you know, he's got two young ones too. Uh, I don't have any kids. My wife is very understanding and supportive and she works during the day anyway. So she would only be without me for about 12 hours. But, uh, yeah, she said, I would have to work. I will pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
she but yeah, earlier, there, you she know, said she had panko breadcrumbs inside the pantry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you she had all that stuff. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, and I, I would, you know, I would have to. Uh, I, I've done twelve. I did almost twelve hours yesterday. Um, just during, you know, from I went fishing when it was dark, and I ended when it was dark, and that wasn't too bad. I mean, it, it was bad on my tailbone from sitting for so long, and. You know, of course, you're going to be sore. Your feet are going to be sore. But I wasn't, you know, I wasn't taking my shoes off. I had waterproof boots on and that sort of thing. Um, but I don't think the battery span would be that that big a deal. I have another battery I can bring on the boat. I have plenty of battery packs to charge my phone. Um, you know, my, my filming lights are all, you know, battery operated and don't charge like i actually have to put batteries in them so if i have to have batteries uh food you know, i'm bringing plenty of food and drink uh i think the only thing that would would suck about it is just being bored when nobody's watching <laughs> or or falling asleep and people are trying to chat with <laughs> do you happen to have a volleyball uh i can get one a Wilson. Oh, Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't, if you can't uh, think of a buddy that you'd want to take with you, then we'll make you a buddy to go with you. He <laughs> <laughs> said, "You might need some external battery packs." I know a guy. <laughs> um, yeah, and the thing is, is I couldn't bring people, so I wouldn't use Streamyard. That's the other thing. I. I wouldn't use a hosting platform. It would just be um, for for YouTube because I hate to say it, and I think this platform that I use from the web based platform is great. Streamyard is great as long as you have a good signal at home, but the app needs some improvement. It really does. So somebody said, uh, you know, you should bring people into the chat or into like we're doing tonight, but I wouldn't use a third party app. So it would just be through YouTube, but uh, it seems like a lot of people are interested in it that are in here. Robert James said, I'll watch it all, man. All right, Robert James. That's right. Even if it ends <laughs> up in you having a psychotic episode, we're in buddy. You're our friend and we're going to watch you, watch you no matter what happens. <laughs> so yeah, I would get off work probably around two thirty, three o'clock. And then, you know, an hour to get home and get everything hooked up and then out there probably by five, I'm thinking. Um, so from five to five. And the only thing I don't like about that is the fact that it'll get so dark so quick, you know, because I'd have to go out and catch bait and everything. So we'll see. Uh, you all, if if you want to put in the in the chat, would you prefer over the weekend or would you still watch on a Tuesday Wednesday, like Tuesday all day and Wednesday. That's the two days before Thanksgiving. So uh, let me know. Let me know. So what is your, so actually, uh, uh, you know, to be transparent, Michael Marilla actually gave me the question for about if we think carp is invasive or not. So I want to hear your opinion. I think if they've been here that long, then they've been here longer than all the rest of us. So I, I, I'm of the opinion, hey, that, that fish is in that water and, and all of its predecessors were there before me, so I'm going to put it back yeah. in that water. The, the state of Iowa for a long time had the rule that you had to throw them up on the bank and kill them off. And we've never done it, and we never will. And even the, the game wardens who see us fishing and we flat out told them you can find us because we're not going to kill a fish and it just mm -hmm. makes the bank stink i mean that's that's no good for anybody so um no i i don't i think at this point they're naturalized and luke did a video and said the same thing so hey if luke's gonna say it then i'm gonna agree with luke no matter what too so <laughs> they're fun to catch that's that's all that's all the influence i was trying to to put onto you or encouragement I, I was you. trying to give to anybody else, you know, they're right I, there. I, and I don't see anyone down in Santee Cooper on the river or on the lake carp fishing. Like it's just not a thing around here. Um, so I might be the only one 
carp fishing, and I know that's not true, but I, anyone I know down here, I, carp is like foreign uh, to everybody. And, and you go into Walmart, and like I was asking Josh, you know, do you or or whoever, Josh or Jake, I can't remember the little Walmart. I bought the little vanilla one and the mulberry one. So, you know, I might try those out too. Yeah. Uh, will you sleep any or 20? Well, uh, if I have guests the whole 24 hours, I won't sleep. I, at least I won't plan on sleeping. Now, if I fall asleep, there's nothing I can, y'all can make fun of me snoring. <laughs> <laughs> y'all can take bets on when I'll fall out of my chair. <laughs> I'll go sleep. I'll, I'll go to sleep and I'm, I only fish for 90 minutes. I'll fall asleep in my chair. <laughs> You're gone for a whole day and fall asleep for a little bit. I forgive you, bud. Yeah. Well, Y'all, it's been an hour and 45 minutes of another awesome show. I've learned more on this show than I have uh, the previous series. And, um, you know, I just thank you and I thank Victor. I wish I would have got a chance to interact with Victor. And and that's my bad because we didn't test before. And uh, that's something that I have to... I have to remember is that a lot of people don't live stream or watch live stream. So they don't see this interaction. So I didn't even think about it. And so when he popped up watching the stream from YouTube, I was like, uh, <laughs> this isn't going to work, but, um, thanks to Jake and thanks to Josh. And thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to carp fishing. I'm, I'm going to try it. And I want to feel that tug, any kind of, any kind of, uh, fish that, that gives you a good fight, I think is an awesome fish to catch um everyone ladies and gentlemen thank you to everybody who donated i tried to put every donation up on the screen little update on the golden whiskers i just received the awards today um the medals look great i'm not going to show them because i want to wait um the trophies i bought two trophies for the two big awards the um legend award and the um creator award and uh i'm not too i'm not as happy with those but you know this is a low budget award show that was created (laughs) and never had been there so anyway um i think they're gonna be great they all have a, a little plaque on the bottom that says what you won and anyway if you haven't voted for the uh golden whiskers awards go to my facebook page or if somebody has the link please post that there's also a creator version that uh, i've been sending to everybody's facebook and email that i have um, if you're a creator and you haven't got that one please email me palmettocats at gmail.com facebook me um instagram me whatever you do get it and vote uh it's so important that you vote and i think some people are going to win Based on the trend that I've seen, we've had over 110 votes for the, for the, um, yeah, for the Golden Whiskers Awards. The, uh, and then a separate 30 for the Creator Awards. So over 140 votes so far. Um, and that's going to be awesome. That's going to be great. I can't wait to do it. Um, the other thing is next weekend, we're going to talk about kayak angling. We're going to talk about everything you need to know to be a kayak angler. Um, I didn't get Justin Johnston to do it. He said he was doing a bass tournament, which why Justin, why if you're watching, why I'm no, just kidding. He's really getting into those. He makes good money off of those. That's why. But um, I do have some excellent guests coming in. Denny from float fish adventures. We got Spencer Bauer from river certified and I think we got one. Oh, we got Flint Hill catfishing coming in. I think those are the only three. Um, but don't don't hold me to that. I might drum up another one. Um, but anyway, that's going to be a great show. Yeah, that's going to be a great show. Um, and then the next weekend, I'm taking the weekend off, y'all. <laughs> so if anybody wants to go live two Sundays from now, uh, you won't be come. Maybe Chunky can go live and, and catch some some more 50 pound catfish from the bank. (laughs) But anyway, this show is, is run on. We still got 69 people in here. Thank you also to my boom squad, uh, members down here. Those are the not hold on. Sorry. There they go. 
Thank you for the Boom Squad members that have already joined. And thank you for the new ones, Mike Turner, Ace Catfishing, and Mike's Outdoor Adventures. Thank you so much. Uh, that's awesome. I, I can't believe that I have people that are doing that, and I'm going to do the best that we can do. We're, we're up to over 10 now, so that was my goal before I started live streams to just those people. And we're just going to talk about whatever you guys want. We're going to talk about what I use, what you use. We're going to share tips, tricks, techniques. Um, thank you all, by the way, talking about tips, tricks, and techniques for um, getting Josh to 3,000 subs. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, anyway, I'm rambling on, man. We, I could probably do, ramble on. Do you on have for... a plan? Do you have a plan for your Boom Squad member only chat? Didn't you say you were going to do one? Just yeah, that's what I was members? talking about. I'm going to live stream just for members. When's and, that going to uh, happen? Probably soon. Probably that weekend that I'm taking off. I'm not sure. I want to make sure that it's really good and I have I everything have to set out up. How to get on the Boom Squad before then? That's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> you say that it's uh, on my phone, right? I have to be on. No, you can't do it on the phone. You have to go okay. on a laptop or a computer. Um, okay. But that's awesome. Maybe I'll make you an honorary Boom Squad member. You man, you Mike Marillo is awesome, y'all. He sends me stuff anytime, like. I don't know something about something. He wants to help me out. He helps all people out, but I know you don't like that when people sit here and talk about you on live stream. So I try to tell him, take it easy because I, I make so many mistakes every day. And I say so many wrong things that upset. We so all do, man. People. I, don't, I don't even mean we it. All it's just like I have a natural <laughs> talent for upsetting people too. So everybody gets on here. My family members are just like, it's like, these people talking about you, you're a nice guy. And I'm like, <laughs> like, I try to help out. Oh, awesome. All right. I'm going to pray us out and we're going to go about our day or our night. Heavenly father. Thank you again for another awesome show. Thank you for the blessing of this channel that I can not only share my love for fishing with everyone, but I can share my love for you. I love you, Jesus, and I thank you for everything you've done for us. I thank you for my guests tonight. I thank you for everyone in chat that came in just to watch the show. Uh, Lord, thank you. Bless them. Bring them back next week, and I just thank you for all that you do, all your blessings. It's in your name I pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Go check out my guests. I'm going to put the little banner up one more time. Go check them out. All the carp gear that we talked about, the links to my guests, YouTube channels, and Palmetto Cats merch. If you want to get the merch, go support everybody's merch and get you a shirt or a hoodie or whatever you want. And um, also, uh, I, I forgot the other one. I was going to say something else, but it doesn't matter. Everyone listening on my podcast. Yeah, see, the, this is why I'm thinking the 24-hour thing is going to be tough because I can't even keep a two hour live stream going. <laughs> oh, I digress. Everyone, thank you so much. God bless you. I'm so appreciative of you. Uh, have a great night. Happy fishing.